Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. We'll just put it up for the ground. Yeah. Oh, Don. Hi. I'm social distancing. <laughs> okay, we'll that's all right. To visit. We all gotta be safe. Yeah. And there's only four chairs in front. So. Amber is requesting your presence. Power on. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence Your glory. 
the stairs, you're fixing up your hair like you do. I know that I'll be there. The second that I see you. On a night like tonight, I think that you can read my mind. It's when you look at me with those eyes, I'm speechless. Staring at you, standing there in that dress. What it's doing to me ain't a secret. Cause watching you is all that I can do. And I'm speechless. You already know that you're my. Well, on behalf of Andrew and Amber, I want to thank you, friends and family, for joining them on their wedding day. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you so much for the honor that it is to be here today. This beautiful, beautiful hot day, Lord. Um, I thank you for Amber and Andrew. I thank you that today they're joining their lives together as one, Lord. And we, we praise you and we, we bless you um, for this relationship, God. And we pray that you bless it. Thank you for all the friends and family who have come all this way to celebrate with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Andrew and Amber wanted this ceremony to begin in worship to the one who brought them together. So let's continue standing now and, and sing. You can find the words on your program for this worship song. So sing together with them.
take in this moment. A lot of planning and time, a lot of sweat, and laughter and tears have led up this, to this moment when you finally never have to say goodbye to each other again. What a beautiful day for a wedding. But we know that this day is not just why you are here. You are here today with family and friends because you want to spend a lifetime together as teammates, as best friends, as lovers, and as co-laborers in the gospel. This is about your marriage, not just a beautiful wedding. My husband, Noah, and I have had the privilege of walking alongside Amber and Andrew as their marriage mentors over the last four months or so. But I actually met Amber her senior year of high school through Fellowship of Christian Athletes. That winter that Amber started coming over to spend time with me during my daughter's nap time was one that I will always cherish. Amber, your passion to know Jesus more intimately, your humility and teachability in asking great questions and seeking out answers for yourself, and your peaceful presence displayed a maturity well beyond your years. And when all of a sudden I started hearing about this friend you'd been hanging out with, I became curious about this unnamed friend. You would say things like, oh, my friend and I are going hiking. My friend and I are going to youth group together. My friend and I are hanging out later this evening. And this friend, of course, happened to be a young man named Andrew Tauchi. Now, Amber and Andrew, I know that neither of you were looking for a relationship when you met. Each of you had enrolled to attend River Falls for the coming school year and had both went on the Facebook admissions page in search of Christian community. And when Amber, you posted about your desire to find a Christian roommate and also Christian friends, it is highly debated who initiated the interaction first, but somebody messaged somebody and they realized that they were living in neighboring towns. Now around this time too, Amber, you'd been creating a list that I had challenged you to write a list of all the things that you would like in a future husband. Unbeknownst to you, you had met him. As your friendship deepened, Amber, you sent this list to Andrew. It had things on it like, loves Jesus, prioritizes family, likes to be active, servant-hearted, a good steward of money, and most importantly, loves dogs. <laughs> It became more and more clear to you both that God had planned to put you in each other's lives. And Amber and Andrew, from our many, many hours of conversations with both myself and my husband, you both know that marriage is not just about warm, fuzzy feelings or checking boxes off of a list. You know that it is primarily about each of you laying down your life for another. It is about service and sacrifice, friendship and commitment, mission and enjoyment for the glory of God. It is an adventure that is wonderful, but also requires that tougher than Tao Chi work ethic. So I wanna to read to you today from Ephesians 5 in the Bible, and I'm gonna use the, the message paraphrase because I think it so clearly explains what the author Paul is getting at. So here it is, Ephesians 5. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husband in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the worshiper, just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out in her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. 
they're really doing themselves a favor since they are already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That is how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way that Christ treats the church and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Now, from that passage in Ephesians 5, on the surface, the two verbs, to submit and to love, do not appear to be close. They can be confused. But when we seek to define each, we realize how close they actually are in meaning. You could define both to submit and to love as to give oneself up for another. Real love, all real love, is self-sacrificial. And so this passage is calling both the wife and the husband to what authors Timothy and Kathy Keller have said. In marriage, both men and women get to play the Jesus role. Jesus in his sacrificial authority and Jesus in his sacrificial submission. Jesus is Lord. He calls us to give up the driver's seat in our lives to follow him, no matter how unnatural it may feel. But he also was willing to give up his life for us, not when we were on our best behavior, when we were being religious, when we had it all together. No, that's not when he died for us. It was in the midst of our worst day of rebellion that's when Jesus died for us, and that's the kind of love that you guys also get to emulate in marriage, his love for us. Now, this type of love is impossible to emulate on your own. <laughs> Andrew, Amber, you are going to mess up every single day, <laughs> and um, there's going to be a need to be a lot of forgiveness um, there. But 1 Peter 4, 8 says, love covers over a multitude of sins. So stick close to the foot of the cross and your marriage will bring glory to God and adventure together for a lifetime. Andrew and Andrew. Now for the vows. All right, Amber, you're first. So when I came up with my list of things that I wanted in a future husband, while tough was not on the top of my list, um, I've been impressed how much I've loved having a tough fiance. <laughs> Andrew, I promise to treasure you and thank God for you and to always forgive you and encourage you. I will guard my heart and my mind in keeping myself for you each and every single day. I'll continually choose to love you over and over again, even through the tough times. I will respect you as the leader of our family and I promise to pray for you and that you'll lead us wherever God may call us. As we walk through all the hills and valleys of our lives, I promise to remind you of God's faithfulness and goodness and where he's taken us and all the good things he has in store for us. I promise to be your partner in crime. I'm gonna cry really <laughs> And I pray that together we're gonna grow in the likeness of Christ. Andrew, when we first met, I instantly knew that you were special. Your love for God was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And that's saying something because God was showing up and he created you. Thank you for all the love, the laughter, and the encouragement throughout our friendship and our relationship. I promise to always show you the love of Christ, to always keep him first in my life, and to encourage you to keep him first in yours. I promise to cherish you every moment of my life and be the name of God that you deserve to be with. I also promise to help raise some adorable and giant children someday too. <laughs> I was so excited to spend the rest of my life with you, and I love you so much. All right, these rings have no beginning and no end. They set forth the eternal nature of love. They will represent the love and the trust that Andrew and Amber promised to each other this day. Um, and Andrew, you can go first here. And Andrew, will you take this ring and place it on Amber's finger? And as you do, I'll have you repeat some words.
Okay, go ahead and place it on her hand as you say this. Amber, I give you this ring as a token of my love and commitment. Sealing my promise with all that I am and all that I have. To be faithful to you, to love, and to honor you. And now for Amber. And if you go ahead and Amber, take that ring and place it on Andrew's finger. And as you do, repeat these words to him. Andrew, I give you this ring as a token of my love and commitment. Sealing my promise with all that I am and all that I have. To be faithful to you, to love and to honor you. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Today, Amber and Andrew have chosen to weave together a cord of three strands, just like this passage talks about. This God knot will be a reminder in the Tauchi home to keep God at the center of their marriage. They are going to take a moment to pray together as well, and as they're doing this, I want you to just please take a moment to pray for this couple. Pray just that God would bless them abundantly.
Andrew and Amber. Since you have promised your love to each other in the presence of God and these witnesses, and have exchanged vows and rings, I pronounce that you are husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Andrew, you may now kiss your bride. I am honored to be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Andrew and Amber Tauchi. Give it up for the happy couple. join them um, back at the tent for a receiving line so they want to say hi to you first and then you can find your seat in the tent they also wanted me to mention to you that they've as you have seen um, given out masks feel free to wear those if, if you um, would like to um, that's that's to your discretion but you can wear those as you um, see fit and they would love to say hi to you back at the tent before you take your seat thank you so much for joining them too for dinner and for yard games thanks guys Stop off. 